Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guests we're bringing back, but before we get into it, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host, Six Sigma, the leader of the greatest group training on earth flight school, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, are you excited uh, I'm ex- to get into I'm this? I'm excited, man. I, I, we, I can't wait. Let's go. I can't wait either because I was, ta- you know, we had Chris Miles on uh, a previous podcast and then I was on Chris's podcast and we started talking about this concept that I'm, I'm kind of like vaguely familiar with. And um, we're going to get into it. But if you don't know who Chris is, Chris Miles at MoneyRipples.com is your financial advisor and money mentor. He is the cash flow expert, and he's a leading authority on how to quickly create cash flow and lasting wealth for thousands of his clients, entrepreneurs, and others internationally. He's been featured in U.S. News, CNN Money, Bankrate.com, and luckily for him, he's finally on a prestigious media outlet <laughs> the art of passive income chris miles welcome back how are you <laughs> great it's good to be back on so let, let's just get into it we we're talking about this concept of infinite banking and you said oh yeah, yeah you know I, I i've got something even better and it was kind of similar it was kind of different and then we kind of like well, what about the qrp and you're like yeah yeah and you know but this is something like that so i really want to get into uh, on a deeper level, what is infinite banking? What is it that you're advising your clients to do and how that different, differs from a QRP? What are yeah. the benefits and what are the disadvantages? Let's get into it. All right. I know there's a lot of questions at once. How do you like the shotgun approach of questions? <laughs> I love it. And we'll just address one at a, after another after another, right? Okay. So, Yeah, I mean, really, like, when you talk about here, the infinite banking concept, I mean, you Google it, you'll find all kinds of stuff on it. I mean, there's, I mean, really, it's life insurance agents that are using stuff, right? Here's, here's what it really is. Like, here's how I see it and how I use it from my perspective, because I'm a, I'm a business owner, first and foremost, as well as an investor, right? Um, Yes, I've been life insurance licensed for the last 16 years. uh, But um, I kind of look at things from a very different angle. And I like things to be simple and easy, you know, and I'll tell you, like, if you look up that stuff, you'll have so many varying opinions and so much crap out there. But here's the thing is like, I, I use this as a supercharged savings account. Like I want my, my savings on, on seriously on, on the steroids, so to speak. Right. You know, um, you know, for example, like you'll see most people, like when they go to invest, they take money out of their savings and they go and invest it. And so you take money, you go make the rate of return. So you go put it into land or whatever you might be investing in, whether it's cash flowing or not you know, you go and you hope to make a great return. Now, obviously I'm anti 401k and IRA type stuff, you know, like I'm anti-qualified plans because I don't like the government having control and changing the rules whenever they feel like, you know? And, uh, and so with this, it's like, okay, cool. I can take money out of savings and go invest it, but there's a lost opportunity cost there because now I'm taking money out of savings and putting it into a place to make money. Now, what if, what if I can make money two places at the same time? I mean, obviously that would be a no brainer, right? It's like, if I can make money in savings and make money in the investment and have that money, like kind of make little money babies, you know, and do the same thing all at the same time, wouldn't that be awesome? And so that's where infinite banking comes in. And that's where like, you know, when I talk about using this strategy, this is a strategy that not only does do, that allows you to do that one in a savings account, the one problem is you're earning point nothing percent, right? I mean, that's one problem. You earn Correct. nothing in the savings account. Um, plus you get taxed on that point, nothing percent. And so whatever little you make, you get taxed on anyway. So it's really like, it's crap. It's, you might as well just bury it in your backyard. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Um, here we try to make it to where you can make whole returns, like an average of like easily four to five plus percent after like that's tax free returns. Now, most people, they can even get that in their 401k. That'd be pretty awesome. When you factor in that they have to pay taxes and fees and everything else, four or 5% is actually kind of what you would hope to make in a 401k, you know, with normal mutual funds and crap like that. But what if you can make those returns and still make the same returns in your investment at the same time? That's where this comes in. 
And so the, the vehicle we use to do that is using whole life. Now, how does that work? How do you actually do that? Well, let me explain like what I did with a savings account when I was, when I did some investment about 11 years ago, I guess it was back in 2006. I remember uh, I had a $25,000 savings account and I remember realizing like, wait, I can leverage, you know, money. Like I, re when I sort of realized that debt was fun, it could be actually okay if you use it right. I thought, well, Hey, I got 25,000 in a savings account. Could I get a loan off that? And so I went to my bank, went to the credit union that said, Hey, yeah, I'm making one and a half percent in this savings account. Cause that was awesome. You know, back then that was normal, not today. Right. I was making one and a half percent. I said, Hey, you know, could I get a line of credit or something against this? And guess what the bank said? Well, of course, right? Why not? And so, so we did. So we got a line of credit against it. They said, great, we'll charge you 4%. You'll earn one and a half percent. So I was still earning the, the one and a half percent on my 25,000, but I was also paying the bank 4%. Now, here's the kicker. This is the thing that blows that people away and blew me away even just a matter of years ago is that simple interest that you get charged on, on a debt or on a loan is not the same as the compound interest you're earning on your savings. For example, you get a five-year car loan and say you get it at 3%. Did you know that if you had that money, say that was a, a $30,000 car loan you could have got, right? But instead, you had the money in cash, and you could have paid it all in cash, but you didn't. You decided to leverage the bank anyways. Now, the, the thing is, when you have a 3% car loan, everybody will tell you what interest you have to beat to, in, with your returns to be able to pay for that car. What do you think people will say? 3%. 3%. Yeah, exactly. Or over, over 3%, right. Or over 3%, right? Right. Guess what? Do the, if you do the numbers, say you take that 30000 in savings, run the interest example. Like if you paid a car payment over five years, right? at 3%, you'll see the interest is only so much. You do the compound interest on it, you do it at 3%, you make well over double the interest, even at 3%. The break okay, now is, there, is, there like a, is there a simple interest calculator I can look up online and a compound interest yeah, calculator? Just, yeah, if you I just go to calculator.net, that's an easy place to use. You know, I just use that, show okay. people that. But yeah, like, uh, you know, just do that 30,000 car loan, 3%, you know, and figure out, you know, you'll see the monthly payment, but look at the total interest it'll surprise you that it's actually not that much. You're like, oh, it's like a couple grand, that's it? Like, are you sure? Because 3% over five years should be like 15, right? No, it's, it's seriously much less than that. And so you're probably looking more like a couple grand actually to be exact, you know, probably more like, no more than like four grand, I guess. I haven't run the numbers, obviously, I'm just doing this off the top of my head, but, uh, but that's the key. Now, to, if you wanna see what it takes that 30,000 in savings to at least match the interest, put in one and a half percent in that same kind of interest calculator, right? Like a compound interest calculator over five years, $30,000 going at one and a half percent will equal about the same amount of interest as 3% on a five-year car loan. Well, let, let me just uh, interject here because Scott Todd is a numbers guy. So Scott, what is your brain working right now? Yeah, I, I no, can see I, the wheel spinning. No, it's the same. No, I agree because Mark, remember when you're paying down a, a debt, you're paying, uh -huh. you're paying the interest on the principal today and every month the principal goes down. So, exactly. I mean, you, you're not really paying 3%, you know, even though you think you are, you're because you're paying 3% on the balance versus, you know, if you were to really get like an effective rate, it would be less than that. Exactly. So basically- even on a depreciating asset, we should be using debt, correct? <laughs> yeah. Not, not the cash, right? Right, as long so, as you can outpace right. it. So like my grandfather's like, if you don't have the cash, you can't afford it. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. You're saying, well, not necessarily. Yeah, it, it's like, you know, I, I remember there's this network marketing company that was, um, I was listening to this financial advice that these guys were giving and they were giving it from the stage in front of thousands of people. And, and I remember the guy saying, yeah, you get a $150,000 loan. You know what you pay over those 30 years? $450,000. Now, understand, I used to do mortgages. I, I did all the truth and lending statements and stuff. I would show that to people at closing. I'm like, that's what, what, what does he come up with those numbers? I ran the numbers. I'm like, what kind of interest would you have to do to actually pay double the interest of what your principal was, right? And you know what it was? It was like, it was like 9.35% mortgage. I was like, this guy's on crack. I was like, the truth is you get 150,000 mortgage over 30 years, you might be paying about 120,000 with today's rates, right? 
you know, that's kind of what it's more like. So yeah, you, you're paying that interest. But here's the thing, 150000 mortgage, even if you could pay it today in cash and save yourself that 120000 over 30 years, do you think that in 30 years you could take 150000 and make more than one hundred twenty? Well, I, not in not if it's sitting in my bank account. Like I, I, I went to, to, to uh, BBVA yesterday and I saw like a big fancy ad, uh-huh. 12 month CD. 1.47 percent i'm like 1.47 percent <laughs> better better than what's in my savings account right now at 0.001 percent or whatever uh-huh. it is right. so this this could not be coming at a better time so from a practical standpoint then you're saying you buy whole life insurance mm-hmm. as a supercharged savings account but you have an insurance component. So if you die, uh-huh. you get the insurance, correct? Tax-free? Oh, Chris, you kind of, he's, he's frozen on us, Scott. Do you see that? I hate when that happens. <laughs> the, uh, the right internet. at the best part, man. Like I, I yeah. remember we had a podcast where we got to a part like this before. Remember that, Mark? I do remember that. Uh, so are you, I think are it was like you, the same. Are, are, are you skeptical, the by the way? Whenever I hear life insurance, yeah, I get really skeptical. No, I don't know I'm why. Not, I'm not skeptical. I mean, like, you know, life insurance, a whole life insurance policy does in fact have that cash component, right? But I think that the pro, like the problem, okay, like the, the problem is, is that I've got to take, you know, $100,000 or whatever the number is. And Chris, is, I, I'm just speculating here, right? Like, because I don't have all the answers. But I think that you got to take like, let's say $100,000, you take $100,000 and you put it into a life insurance policy and then you're taking a loan on life insurance policy. So the life insurance policy is continuing to grow and then you've got right. this loan, you know, and so essentially, you know, you've, you're you borrowing off of the, the life insurance component, the cash component. And that's not necessarily, a, to me, it's not necessarily a big deal. I think that the challenge is, is that you actually have to put in the hundred thousand dollars, right? Like, I don't think it works with like 50,000. I I don't know. I don't have the exact numbers, but you know, essentially you're, you're taking a lot of cash and you're, you're kind of locking it up in there. Yeah. You can go back and get it as a, as a uh, cash component, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, Mark. Well, I, you know, hopefully he's going to come back because I want to, I want to know the differences between this and the QRP of the QRP allows us to literally have total control of our money. I mean, I think, I mean, check this out. In the Roth component, it's tax free. I know in the QRP too, we, um, we can buy life insurance, which you can't buy in a 401k. We can buy life insurance. So So we could combine both. I think we could. (laughs) So if we could do that, because like right now I've I've got cash, you've got cash sitting in the savings account. Right. Right. Because you know, we're running these, these entities. And right. so, but is there going to be some kind of penalty to have it flow in, flow out, flow in, flow out? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's so. A good this deal. might be a great one-two combo. Maybe it's right. not either or. Maybe it's both. But I still don't know because Chris has not come back. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I I know for a fact it was with uh, it was with. Uh, uh M- mc remember mc mc lobsher yeah right and at r- the best it was part. right at this part exact same part and it was a similar topic too remember that it was a similar it, topic yeah it was it was gone yeah so maybe yeah. this is just what happens it's like when you start talking about it you're like cut off yeah you know you know it's interesting because <laughs> when we do the boot camp surveys and we ask people about you know what'd you like best what would you change a lot of people I would say a lot. I'd say maybe 10% when, because Damien talks about the EQRP bootcamp and he goes, you know, a lot more in detail um, because, you know, we make the argument, look, you know, the one disadvantage of land investing over all the real estate niches is that there's no tax advantage because land never depreciates. It lasts forever. But if you use your EQRP, then you can get some tax advantages from land investing. And right. so a lot of people will say, will bring up, this concept of, yeah, the EQRP is great, but also look into infinite banking 
And for whatever reason, I mean, I've always kind of just shied away from it. But now, all right, Chris is back. So, Chris, <laughs> we're, we're arguing about the advantages and disadvantages of the EQRP versus this infinite banking concept uh-huh. and, and whole life insurance. But now that you're back, we're like, it always happens like at the best part, somebody has like an internet you know, problem. So let's go from where you're talking. From where I was talking? Yeah, yeah. About okay. the whole life insurance. Yeah, last component. I heard you were recapping it. So, um, so yeah, the, so like you said, here's the thing with the death benefit is the death benefit's purely bonus. Um, but what okay. it does give us is that tax shelter, right? And not to mention some actual real protection too, liability protection. I mean, in most states, people, you could be a millionaire and people could not get touch, could not touch this money even if they win a lawsuit. You know, creditors, lawsuits, things like that, they can't touch this money. So, you know, unlike, you know, some, most of the savings that we have, right? I mean, other than like a 401k, almost anything is up for grabs when somebody sues you, right? There's any kind of liability, but here the money is safe. Um, on top of that, and really what makes this special is that leverage component. Like we talked about that compound interest of the savings versus the simple interest of the loan, right? But here's, what, right. here's why that's so important is that you don't have to make the same interest rate to beat the interest rate. And so, for example, I mean, we talked about even just earning half the interest rate to then at least break even, right? To at least, you know, match the interest that's charged on us. As, as Scott had mentioned, as the balance goes down on the loan, the interest goes down too, the amount of interest being charged. You know, vice versa, when his money compounds, it snowballs, it goes up. So there's this curve that goes upwards while the other curve goes down, right? Right. And so um, if you have something like whole life where say, even this is even a bad example, this is actually more conservative than what you get in reality. Say you're charged 5% for the loan, but you earn 4% compounding, yet you're kicking butt. You know, I just did an example for a real estate professional just the other day where it was roughly about $100,000 he would borrow out to buy like a duplex as well as a single family rental, right? Right. Um, with that, I mean, that was his down payment. And so we actually like the, I love to leverage the banks for their money. I leverage as much as I can. And then I use this for the rest. And so the cash down payment, when you can't leverage it, can't usually loan unless you're doing a hard money loan, like eight or 9% plus. Right. Um, right. We went ahead and said, Hey, we'll we do it from here. Now, when we, we did that, we took the cash flow and went and paid back towards the loan, which just frees up the cash to use again, just like a 401k loan. The difference is 401k loan, you might only get like one or two loans at, the, at once. Right two max, usually one loan, you can have it at the same time and you have to pay it off before you get another loan. Um, this one, you can have dozens of loans out all at the same time. There's no limit to how many loans you can get. And so okay, well, what, what sucks about this concept? Because why isn't everyone doing this? Well, what sucks is that you really, you got to find somebody who actually is willing to cut back their commissions and their, and the, the insurance costs. Because here's the thing, even with me right now, I'm, I've been retired for the last year or so. So like I've been kind of doing this more for fun the last year. And uh, it's interesting because like I, I've, when I find out all the little, the kind of the ins and the outs, all the art behind it, right? Um, my whole goal is how do I get you to get the minimal amount of cost to be able to stuff in the maximum amount of cash? And if, it really, if you have at least a good 20 plus grand a year, depending on your age and health, of course, but if you have at least 20 grand a year, you're putting toward investing, this is probably a great option because here's, here's the, the hardest part. And this is the part that sucked for me because I've sold, like I said, I've done insurance for the last 16 years. Um, you know, I remember when I first got my first whole life policy, when I was starting to do real estate investing and things like that. And maybe you guys have the same experience, but my first policy, you didn't have any cash in that first year. It was, a, it was pitched as being this long-term thing. So even the whole infinite banking, be your own banker concept was it like, oh, that's five, 10 plus years down the road. And then you can leverage the cash. Then you can go and finance a car rather than use the bank and stuff. Which, by the way, I still go to the bank to finance a car. I don't use this because I'm going to get a better rate with the bank. So I'm going to go with, with the cheapest interest rate and the best terms, right? So that's where right. I go. Um, but I got sold a policy and I asked the guy point blank. I'd already been insurance license for four years. I knew insurance. And I asked him, I said, hey, can I stuff in more cash than what, what you're saying it's required? His answer to me was no. So I said, all right, well, I guess it's just the thing. It takes 17 years to break even, you know, 17 years of premiums to have that much in cash value savings, you know, right there available. All right, cool. It's kind of a longer term deal. Got it. Guess what? A couple years later, I learned that he flat out lied. I had a two hour screaming match with this guy. You know what I found? What it really came down to after we argued back and forth about what's the right way to do it? 
he finally just said, Chris, I couldn't do it that other way because it cuts my commissions. I was like, dude, I want to face like yeah. that's just stupid, you know, because of commissions. That's the really what it comes down to is that. And, and see, he had a scarcity mentality. He thought, well, if I cut back all the commissions then I don't make anything, it's not worth my time. But I found that because I cut back the fees so much, people stuff in more money anyways. Cause they're like, well, this is like a savings account. Yeah. It might cost me like maybe 20% of whatever I put in that first year. But by the third year, there's more going in. It's building more cash and interest than even a savings account will. Like it's kicking butt. In fact, by the fourth or fifth year, you already have the same amount of cash in, in savings, in that savings as you put in. So already you're pretty much at what, what it would be like a savings account anyways. But the cool thing is you can use it from day one. Once you get that cash in there, you can go and use it to go and invest with. So I have people that right now, they just got it set up a couple weeks ago and they're borrowing cash to go do their investments with their real estate and stuff. So they don't have to wait 17 years or whatever. Like you can use it right away. Where you put the cash in, say you put in 40 grand, you'll, that means you'll probably have about at least 32 grand available to use right away. That's not even talking about the compound tax-free interest you're earning and stuff, right? Right, right. Okay, okay. So Sky and I both have an EQRP, a, a qualified retirement uh-huh. plan. We can each put in like $53,500 right. a year in this plan, right? Now it's, yep. it's, and it's got a tax-deferred or tax-free vehicle. Right. Well, let's just say we're using the tax-free vehicle of, of uh-huh. it. And, and, and during this time, let's say the next 90 days, Scott and I don't have anywhere to invest. We're looking for our next big real estate land deal or whatever it might be, Yeah. right? Could we put some of that money into our, a whole policy of life insurance and do the supercharged savings account and then borrow from that and leverage it to do our deals? and really kind of amp up our returns. You, you could cash money out of those, yeah. Um, now here's the thing, depending on which kind it is, if it's more like the Roth, right, where it's already been taxed, um, obviously you can access that cash and it can go in. Because this, this has very similar tax rules as a Roth IRA. The only okay. difference is you can stuff in a lot more money. So where you guys are putting in the max 53,000, you could, right. I actually have people are putting in a half million a year as their max that they could put in. You know, so. I mean, as long as you can qualify for the insurability aspect, you know, we can stuff, we try to stuff in as much cash as possible. And so I have a lot of people are putting in over a hundred grand and the same thing, but here's the cool thing is that there's no temper, you know, there's no 10% penalty on trying to pull out the growth or anything before you're 59 and a half. There is no 59 and a half rule. So this money is accessible to you all you want. So, okay. So, so using this use case, 90 uh-huh. days goes by, we're making 4% in our, in our, uh, infinite banking or our uh-huh. supercharged banking account. And all of a sudden we see this, you know, huge land deal that we want to buy. We pull that money out penalty free uh-huh. and then invest it. So yeah. it's a one, two punch. It's not either, or it's, it's how do you get both? You can how do you have both. a cake and eat it too. Yeah. Well, it's, it's earning interest and using it. So it's not just, and that's the hardest part for people to grasp. They're like, wait a minute. Well, if I put money in this, you know, this life insurance type thing, well, now I'm not making money on my, my investments. No, you're doing both. You're just, instead of putting it into your savings account to then cash out, we're putting it in, letting the insurance company give you a secure line of credit against your money to then go, you can go and leverage the crap out of that while your money's still building and growing and compounding tax-free the whole time. And so, and now this didn't always work with the numbers before, but when I realized I can, how much I could cut costs back, because like I said, like most people in the first year or two have zero cash. In the first right. two years, usually people will have almost 90% of their cash back that they've already put in. You know, so that's like the cost. That's the downfall, I would say, is you got an upfront cost. But after right. that, the costs start going down. And like I said, like pretty soon you're making, like even after the fifth year, you're probably making at least a percent average return on that plus your investment returns already. And then after that, it's like four or 5% tax-free. It's awesome. Scott Todd, what are you thinking? I, uh, I mean, look, if you, I think, I think Chris has a good idea. I mean, one thing is you got to be able to qualify for it. Right. So, you know, health wise, you, you gotta, you gotta be healthy, you know, like you, that's why I'm on the treadmill desk, baby. (laughs) All right. So, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to qualify for it. And then like Chris, realistically, how long does it take me to get this thing set up? Cause I gotta have the insurance agent come out and, you know, approve my health and do all that stuff. Uh, what, like four weeks, six weeks. 
It depends. I mean, this time, if it's Christmas time of year, it kind of sucks, but uh, it takes a little bit longer. But, you know, most of the time, yeah, usually within a month or two, you can have it totally approved. Just depends. I mean, like, you know, for example, the agent doesn't have to go see you. I mean, you can do this stuff all over the phone yeah, or online, yeah. like I've done with most everybody around the country. Um, but, you know, you send out a paramed to your house. So they, could, I, they do what I call a poke and pee test. So they uh, take your blood and your urine sample, right? And, uh, and then after that, usually it's within a month. They can usually get approval to say, all right, you're approved and here it is. And then and here's a cool thing too. Like I talk about the max you can put in. There's, I mean, you don't have to put in that max every single year. So unlike some people are like, they're committed to put in a certain premium every single year. It's flexible. We could put in more, we could put in less. Um, we could change the plan. We can even make it paid up so that you don't have to pay any more premiums at a certain age, whatever age we decide to make it at. And you're done. You know, you're like, cool. And it just keeps growing and compounding without you putting any money in at all. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome when you realize like how you can use it. The hardest part is that you can use it so many different ways that it's your imagination really becomes the, uh, the, uh, the limitation, you know? So, so for people, let's assume you're healthy and you're young, uh -huh. right? Um, or relatively young, who is this not for? Who would you say probably not a good idea? Yeah. You know, like somebody who's like cash strapped, like you just don't have any extra cash flow. I mean, the best thing I would suggest right now is get a cheap term policy that can convert to one of these policies later on without you having to requalify. In fact, I had a client in Maine. He was 60 years old, perfect health. He was a, a chiropractor up there. And, uh, and he actually had got his whole life policy and he got a term policy. And just two years after we got the policy set up, he got a brain tumor. Now he flew all the country, got chemo, he got done naturopathic treatments. He got it all done, pretty much cured within a year and a half. It was gone. No evidence of it at all. But he will never be able to get insurance again. The cool thing is he got approved at the top preferred rating. So with his term insurance, so he can convert that to whole life at any time. And they can't take that rating away. He still gets the best rating as if he never had a brain tumor. Um, so for that reason, that's a big reason right there. Yeah, but you know, when I, when I read the conventional financial literacy books, they always say, buy term, invest the difference. Uh -huh. um, you know, your, your financial advisor typically thinks it's a horrible thing to do is, is, is the, are these expensive whole policies. So you're sort of twisting it and saying, well, not necessarily. Uh -huh. And so, so make that final argument. Yeah. You know, you got you to understand where education comes from. This is a little bit of like a rich dad, poor dad moment for you because you got to understand that everything that financial advisors teach you, they do not come from them being awesome investors. Would you agree with that? I, I mean, agree. Yeah. I mean, like they're, they're idiots really when it comes to actually creating money, creating wealth. Here's what it is. Think about insurance agents. That's, that's who, who's the one that says, hey, buy term invest the difference usually, right? Well, why would they teach that? Why would an insurance company tell them to tell you to buy term invest the difference? Here's exactly why. Term insurance, if you ask almost any insurance company, and I've talked to several company presidents about this, when they talk about their numbers, term insurance only pays out between 0.5% between to 1% of the time. So think about it. If you're a business, you own an insurance company, and you're thinking, how can I make more money? You know what? almost nobody dies with these term insurance policies. And I bet you know what I should do. I should tell people to cancel the policies right before they die. That would be the most profitable, awesome thing I could do because then I don't have to pay out anything. I just made a ton of premiums for the last 10, 20, 30 years and voila, I'm rich. So think about it. term insurance is cheap. It's easy to sell. And then two, most never pay out anyways. So of course, if your insurance company, you're going to tell your insurance agents to teach that very crap about buy term invest a difference. But if you're an investor, if you're somebody who thinks like a wealthy person does, you're thinking, hey, my estate attorney knows I'm going to have a big tax issue anyways at death. He's going to tell me when I'm, if I'm 60 or 70 by that point, say, you know what? You should probably buy a whole life policy now that you're old and expensive. Here, go buy this now, right? No, buy it while you're young and it's cheap, you know, as young as you can, you know? And that's the thing is like all that crap is taught by insurance companies. They're telling you to do the very thing that's profitable for them. Whole life pays out because it, it's your whole life. It pays out regardless. You know, that, that's the cool thing. So, yeah, and, and I know the whole buy term invest the difference, but they're not thinking from the perspective of how do I double dip my investment returns? How do I make money here and there? How do I make it my investments and inside the savings account? 
that's the thing that they're not teaching you. And that's the difference of what I'm teaching right now. And, and I'll tell you, like, I've never seen anybody who cuts costs as much as I do that's able to maneuver it and make it work like I have. I've only seen a few people do it, and they've just tied me. <laughs> they've never beat what I've done. All right. So if we want to learn more, how do we learn more? You know, a great thing you could do is, uh, I mean, one, you can check out my show, The Chris Miles Money Show. Uh, on, it's a podcast. Obviously, you can go check out on iTunes or wherever, you know. Um, I actually teach some of those principles on that. Um, you can also, you know, reach out to me through my website on moneyripples.com. Okay. And if I personally want to just go ahead and get started, how do I do that? Just reach out to me. Just message me. You can message me through my site or chris at moneyripples.com. Just send me a direct email. That kind of okay. thing. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Well, as is our show format, I know Chris, you've already done this before, uh -huh. but uh, I do have to ask you for another tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. The mentorship has been amazing, but I'm going to extract one more tip from your sagacious brain. All right. I know you couldn't see that. I just like pointed to my brain yeah. there. I'm, I'm accessing it right now. So, uh, you know, I would say this is that, um, you know, again, everything's about leverage. And I know you guys teach us so much, but I mean, leverage is like the ultimate key, especially when you create it towards cash flow. I mean, that's, you don't have to save up millions of dollars. If you can create leverage and you can try to create, get your money working harder for you, it's amazing how little money you can use to create massive results. And I know you guys are products of this, so I'm preaching to the choir, but I just can't right. reemphasize that enough because I see people in their lives, the hardest thing, they make it too hard in their mind. They think that it has to be hard. And so they automatically reject what could be profitable or easy or what could actually be amazing and they reject it. So that's the key for this week. All right, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, check out this, uh, check out this app. It's called trytaylor.com. That's T A. I L O R Taylor, try taylor.com. And right. uh, what you do is, you know how like you, you'll do a screenshot on your phone, like screenshot, and then you got to scroll up and do another screenshot, another screenshot, another screen. Like if you're trying to do like multiple things, like multiple segments or something like maybe maps and directions or a website and you just want to send the whole thing. Right. What this app does is it takes those screenshots and it connects them together. So it's just one long one long picture, if you will, oh. as opposed to 10, you know, 15 different pieces. Huh. That, that is very useful. Yeah, it's very useful. Wow. Yep. All Where right, I'm getting, it, I'm getting it now. <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. This is, this is how I spend my time. You spend your time finding investments. I, find, I spend my time finding like, you know, apps. I used your alarm app last time and man, like that drove my wife nuts when all says like three, two, one. She's like, what yeah. is that? Turn it off. It's waking me up. Yeah. yeah. That's the idea. It's supposed to wake you up. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Wow. This is great. And it's free. It's free, um, man. It's, it's free. free. Wow. All right. Done and done. Try Taylor. Um, all right. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about supercharging your savings account, go to moneyripples.com, moneyripples.com. Chris Miles, are we good? We're great. Do you think, did we cover enough? Should we have you back again? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Man, it's weird. My computer like wanted to update right in the middle of the show. I was like, of course it would, right? That's what happens when I get right. a PC. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. Um, all right, well, all right, well, I want to thank you again. Um, I want to remind all the listeners, the only way we're going to get the quality guests like a Chris Miles from moneyripples.com. You got to do three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send a screenshot of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 passive income launch kit. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash geek pay and get set up and get your first note for free and just automate getting paid. It's amazing. Geekpay.io. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right, man. We're going to have to argue about this and, and figure out some creative way to, to get going here with Chris. <laughs> Sounds good.
Sounds good. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody and uh, let freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>